Hello everyone, back with another installment of Grandmasters Losing in 10 Moves. Uh, this game is from New York, 1925, against uh, long uh, with the White Pieces is longtime U.S. champion Frank Marshall, and with the Black Pieces we have uh, uh, Tori uh, with the um, with the with the Black Pieces, of course. Now uh, the game started out D4 from Marshall. Knight of six from tour eight, C4. So we have our uh, regular Queen's Gambit going on here. And then we have this uh, move that's uh, rarely seen at top levels. I don't think because it's bad. It's just because it's um, kind of out of favor right now. Um, this uh, it, it was called Two Knights Tango at one point as a nickname. I'm not sure of the official name, but it was called Two Nights Tango and I remember in the late nineteen nineties Grandmaster Alex Yermolinsky um uh played this I believe a few times in um major tournaments. So very provocative opening of course it's almost uh like an Alicon's defense but in the uh against the uh uh Queen side, right? Um you know, provoking the queen's pawn from d4 to d5 to chase the knight around. And the idea is relatively the same in order to uh, get white to uh, build this large uh, center that uh, eventually becomes fixed. And then a liability where black uh, extends the overextended, ex attacks the overextended center and tears it down and leaves uh, white with all types of pawn weaknesses. So after knight c6, uh, Marshall uh, felt the need to play d5 and uh, basically drive the knight away from the center. After all, there's no pawn representation in the center from black. So white decides to take space. Some of the ideas of black in this opening could be seen. Uh, for instance, here, if uh, knight c3, for example, and let's say e5 right because the knight on c6 gives an ability to play e5 right away although uh d6 can be uh play e uh excuse me e6 rather um but e5 here is very provocative let's say if e5 of course if d takes e5 then um black equalizes right away here and if knight after knight c3 e5 let's say d5 taking the space then then simply knight e7 and let's say knight f3 attacking this pawn right here, then knight g6. Of course, e4 is possible. Again, white is allowed to build up this formidable looking center, but notice how black develops around it. Bishop c5, for example, the equalizer move here. And then um, white is left with this kind of bad bishop. Where do you put it? You know, d3 is biting on granite. You could put it on e2. It's not really doing anything. So again, white has what he wants in this space, but again, is um, you know, is this a center of liability, right, or is it um, an asset in this position? Okay, because it's not really hindering black's uh, development at all. Right, eventually, of course, black will play d6. This guy will come out, and uh, all is well, at least in this position. Okay, so here. After knight c3, excuse me, after uh, knight c6, then just d5 was played right away. Of course, Tori did what any uh, self-respecting chess player would do. is hot right in the center. Not only does he occupy the center, he's also occupying with time here. Plays knight e5. Marshall, um, I don't think really knew what was going on too much in this position. Probably surprised by the opening. He plays b3. Another pawn move. And of course this is exactly what uh, white. Excuse me. What black wants is for white to waste his time. Um, instead of developing. is playing these uh, defensive uh, pawn moves. And now. Torre begins to counter attack against the pawn center. Not only does he counter attack against the pawn center. But notice all of the. Uh, white pawns on the queen side are all on uh, white squares, all on light squares. This means that the corresponding dark squares are weak. So this move e6 not only attacks the center right of uh, white, but it also releases the power of this dark square bishop. 
Bishop b2 by Marshall attacking this knight right here. And now Bishop b4 check. And already black is better. Notice how, yes, we see white with the space, but black's head in development and his pieces are fine as these um, this structure uh, is really not doing anything to uh, keep black's pieces from operating freely in the center. So after bishop b4, uh, white has a choice here. Either play knight d2 or knight c3. Which would you uh, prefer here? Well, um, Marshall played knight d2, which to me is, is bad because it, it uh, cuts off the defensive options. Um, better is knight c3. Although black is still better, uh, he's, uh, white still has uh, options to defend here. So, for example, at the knight e4, black can play excuse me white can play queen d4 which which is awkward it defends the knight however and attacks the knight here and of course black will be equal after bishop takes bishop takes knight c3 and let's say queen takes e5 right if we want to uh you know keep things going queen takes e5 here and then queen f6 and this is a possible variation all right Now, I was just looking at that because I think after f3, this knight might have trouble get, getting out. So maybe that's not even the best. Uh, maybe if the knight takes c3, queen takes... Yeah, I actually have to look at that because I think... I didn't mean to spend too much time on that, but that looks kind of funny to me for some reason. So, okay, instead of bishop takes, let's go with knight takes c3. That's much better. Knight takes c3. Bishop takes c3. Now bishop takes c3. Let's do it like that. Now this is forced. Queen takes c3. Now queen f6. Okay, there's the equality for black. That's that's a That other line looked kind of fuzzy. Knight e4, queen d4, and taking with the bishop first. Yeah, this looks kind of fuzzy. Um, black can, white can play queen takes e3 or queen takes e5 here. And when he takes, plays queen takes e5, he's threatening this pawn and this, and of course the take with this knight. And queen f6 seems like the best move here because, uh, the knight is just hanging. But however, after queen takes f6, g takes f6, I had spotted that there's really no place to go with this knight after it's attacked. That's what I was, that's what I was looking at. Because it's white's move. Yeah, you have 94 here, but what if white just plays f3? And then, you know, just basic move like king d2 on the next move. Then how do you get out of that? So if you guys come up with something, let me know. But, it, you know, just looking at it, it doesn't seem like that's going to end up good for black. So that's why I went back and instead of taking with the bishop, just take with the knight. And now I feel much better with this continuation for black. That should be just equal. Okay, so that was a little um, mini rabbit hole. I didn't mean to go into that, but I just wanted to make sure I'm giving you the right uh, continuations. All right, so knight. Um, so again, knight c3 in my book is is just better as far as it gives uh, defensive options. Of course, bishop c3 is possible also, and for the same reason, it gives just more some more defensive. Um, flexibility, flexibility to uh, to white. Although black is better here. So going back to the move in the game, Marshall played knight d2. So now, if you notice on knight, the knight d2 restricts everything. The the king has nowhere to move. The queen can no longer come to d4 if if it needs to. All right. So that's what I mean when I say that it cuts off the defensive options. So of course, Torre plays a real natural move. Knight e4, pinning the the knight is pinned, so he doubles up on the knight. So how do you defend? If you play a natural move like knight g f3, remember black has a knight on uh, e5, so he just would take that, and this knight is pinned, so there's no way to capture. So knight g f3 is out the question. So the only other defensive option is now bishop c1. And this is a sad position, especially for a renowned tactician like Frank Marshall, who 
uh, only has one piece developed, and that is the knight on D2. So, Tori ended his misery by just playing the move queen um, F6. Of course, queen F2 made is threatened, and this rook is, is threatened indirectly. Um, basically, on any of white's next moves, um, knight G4 is uh, going to be played. Okay, because got to remember this has to be protected. So either knight h3, right, protecting f2 or knight g f3. So for instance, if knight g f3 here, then just move like this, knight g4. Again, the rook is, the rook is challenged. And what are you going to do, rook b1? Rook b1 and, uh, you know, uh, you just kind of bust it, you know, bust it there. All right, knight uh or knight e f two be take you know take so uh marshall's all in all kind of trouble there and uh forced to resign after only seven moves so this is something that you can kind of surprise uh people with uh if you're so enterprising to try to this opening uh is black so again another short video grandmasters losing in under 10 moves in that case i think it was like seven moves frank marshall versus tour uh, new york uh, 1925 hope you enjoyed that video please check the links uh below for uh dvds slash books if you still read those um my donation link is below also please uh support the channel also hit uh, like and subscribe and um, I'll see you guys soon on the next video.